Hi there YouTube, time for another Chem Complete video. We're continuing the general chemistry portion today. We're going to continue our lecture on quantum mechanics and quantum theory. And today we're going to be looking at quantized energy. So the idea of quanta energy, uh, we discussed it in the last video, is the idea that atoms, when they release energy, they release energy in these set amounts or these individualized packets of energy which is kind of weird because in the last video we discussed that uh, electrons as well as light or photons can act as both waves and particles until you actually observe them. And so one of the, the I guess, weird things to think about is a wave, which is sort of offering this continuous energy as it moves along, is somehow subjected to quantized energy. It's subjected to, it can't just be some abstract or arbitrary amount. It comes in discrete packets. So it's you're either this much or this much. You're not in between. Um, and we're going to talk about that today. So this really came about by an individual by the name of Max Planck. And many of you may have heard at least of the last name because we use Planck's constant when we are looking to calculate quantized energy. And Max Planck is really the one that suggested uh, or found the solution to the idea that these quantized energy packets existed instead of a continuous uh, amount of energy that can basically be on any sort of range when you're looking at that scale. So Max Planck developed something called Planck's constant and he related it to quantized energy and he said the energy for a given photon and this was in, uh, I just want to mention, with coordination with Albert Einstein in the early 1900s. So he said, uh, quantized energy of a photon or a individualized particle, where you can talk about it as a wave, is equal to some constant h, which we refer to as Planck's constant, times the frequency, remember nu from uh, the previous lecture, and that will give you the quantized energy when you're looking at that. So the way that we go about this is you simply do the multiplication to find the energy associated at a given frequency, which we could also relate to wavelength. So Planck's constant, if you think about this, energy is normally measured in joules, and frequency is in inverse seconds or per second. So that means that Planck's constant is joule times second or joule seconds because we want the seconds to cancel out. So a second and a per second, and then we'll just end up with joules for the energy. So it turns out that Planck's constant is 6.63, and we're approximating here, times 10 to the negative 34th joule second. So it's just like that. That is Planck's constant right there very important value you want to make sure that you have this memorized if you're doing tests or anything like that because it is going to come up over and over again so that's Planck's constant and it can be utilized in order to calculate quantized energy which is E so I do have some practice problems here so give me a second I'm gonna write them up on the screen and then we will go ahead, I'll read them off, you can practice them, and we will go over the answers together after that. So give me one second here. Okay, so now you guys should see the questions up on the screen. So let's read these off and talk about how you should approach them. And then at that point, we can take a look at the solutions once you're done. So number one says the energy of a photon is 5.87 times 10 to the minus 20 joules. What is the wavelength? So let's think about what we need here. In this equation, we're going to look for the wavelength. We know that the energy, which is given to us, is equal to Planck's constant. We know what that value is times the frequency. So we can find frequency if we're given the energy. That's step one, is let's find frequency. Once we have frequency, the next thing that we would be interested in doing is saying, okay, now I'm looking for the wavelength, right? You always got to keep in mind what you're actually after. So from the previous lecture, we remember that wavelength can be found by saying lambda, which represents wavelength, is equal to C, the speed of light, over nu. So find nu, and if you find the frequency, 
then you can find the wave length in turn. So use those equations and that process in order to figure that one out. And then the second one says calculate the energy of a photon with a wavelength of 3.75 times 10 to the fourth nanometers. So a couple of things to keep in mind here. Number one, we're looking for the energy of a photon. We know that energy is equal to Planck's constant, which we know, times frequency. So we don't know the frequency yet, but we can get that if we know the wavelength. So again, this problem is almost the reverse of the problem up here. Here I'm given an energy, I want the wavelength. Here I need to find the energy, and I'm given the wavelength. Okay. Um, I think, did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, so what do I need after that? Again, I need, if I have the wavelength, I can say that frequency, which I would like to get over here, I'm going to plug that in here, that frequency is equal to C, speed of light, over the wavelength. Uh, and the last thing I would remind you of, that this applies to both of these, is that wavelength okay can be either in meters or nanometers so you need to keep track of your units it's given in nanometers here in this question I didn't specifically ask for it in meters or nanometers but we're probably going to take a look at both because uh, it's just a simple conversion so pause the video try these out and then you can stay tuned for the solution so I'll see you in a minute all right guys so let's take a look at this what we want to do is we want to solve first for frequency and then we'll plug it in to find wavelength for this question. So I'll start by algebraically solving for frequency. 5.87 times, oops, times 10 to the minus 20 joules is equal to Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule second and then I'm solving for a frequency so it's times frequency so what I would do is I would divide through by Planck's constant so I would say divide through by 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 there and do the same thing over here and that'll give me what my frequency is so if you plug that into your calculator the answer that you should end up with is that the frequency was equal to 8.85 times 10 to the 13th. All right, so that is the frequency. Well, we know the speed of light, so now we can figure out using the speed of light 3.00 times 10. 10 to the eighth, right, over 8.85 times 10 to the 13th, that should give me the wavelength in meters. So keep in mind, if you wanted nanometers, it would be different. So th this comes out to 3.39 times 10, what did I get, times 10 to the minus 6 is what I got, 10 to the minus 6 meters. Okay, so that's the wavelength. You could have stopped there. If you wanted to put this into nanometers, you would times this by 10 to the ninth. That's what you would need to do. And so if you take this times 10 to the ninth, because again, nanometers is a smaller unit, so I should have a larger amount of it, you end up finding that this becomes 3.39 times 10 to the fourth. So it would be around 33,900 nanometers if you're following significant figures, so this would be nanometers. So those would be the acceptable answers. It could be either of those for the first problem. Okay, so hopefully you got that. Now, we're again working in reverse down in the second problem. So for this one, let me flip to my notes. All right, we're searching for energy if we're given the wavelength. So in this case, the way that I set this one up, and you may have solved for frequency first, I just said, okay, if I know that this is equal to frequency, then I'm going to plug this in place of that, because I do know those values, and I can move forward from there. So let's look at the setup. I want energy, and energy is going to be equal to Planck's constant, 
and then I need to do frequency, but I'm going to do frequency, try to include units here. I'm going to do my frequency using speed of light and the wavelength. Now, remember the wavelength, because speed of light is meters per second, the wavelength needs to be in meters. It's given to me in nanometers in the problem. So I'll need to make sure that I throw in a conversion for that. So what I will say here is it's Planck's constant times frequency, where I'm going to represent frequency as C over lambda. And so C is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth over, right, because it's over lambda. So lambda in this case is 3.75 times 10 to the fourth. Again, that's a nanometer, so I'm also going to multiply by 10 to the minus ninth in order to convert it to meters. So this entire equation right here will get you energy. Now, you could have solved just this portion and then found the value for frequency and plugged it into the energy equation. That's also acceptable if you did that. Uh, so let's see, when I calculated through all this, I got that energy was equal to, uh, what did I get here? It looks like 5.30 times 10 to the negative 21st joules should be the answer that you ended up with. So this right here would be the answer for the second problem. That would be the quantized energy packet. So I just want to bring up one more point here um, before we sort of wrap up, which is the idea of quantized energy. So if we say that energy is equal to h nu, or in other words, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of a given particle or wavelength, then what I'm saying when I say I can only have discrete quanta of energy is that the next option would be 2h nu and the next option would be 3h nu and 4h nu, right? So four times, so I'm, what I'm saying is this is the base level of energy that I'm allowed to give off. The next level of energy that I'm allowed to give off is two times that amount and then three times that amount, etc. So it may seem weird because you're dealing with wavelengths, but think about everyday objects, right? Um, or even we can talk about electrons. You don't have half an electron. You don't have a third of an electron. Electrons are quantized meaning I have one electron, then I can have two electrons, then I can have three electrons. Think of it the same way. You're, you're basically saying this is the minimal energy packet that can be given out. If you want to go up from that, you're going to have two of those energy packets. You're not going to have anywhere in between. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about quantized energy. Um, and I just wanted to clarify that because I know the concept can be confusing for some students. So that's it. Hopefully you guys were able to get through the practice problems and you found this helpful. Please remember to like and comment if you have any questions, if you found the video helpful. And subscribing will always be the quickest way to get updates when I put information out. So I hope that this was useful and I will see you guys for the next lecture where we will start to talk about energy jumps between quanta levels, uh, meaning the shell. So if, I, if I'm in a level two shell of the electron configuration and then I jump up to a level three shell, what's the energy difference between that jump? We're going to start looking at that, uh, which really deals with Bohr's model of the atom. That'll be next time. So I'll see you guys there. Have a good one.